Welcome back. As we promised, uh, one of our main segments of this episode of our breakfast show is going to be totally dedicated to the ICC warrants, the ARAS warrants against uh, Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu and his former Defense Minister Yuav Gallant. Crimes against humanity, war crimes, starvation of people, killing civilians, not any kind of respect is shown whether to the human beings, the human lives, or the international humanitarian law. But these warrants, are they going to do something positive on the ground, tangible, which we can touch? And uh, what about it as a non-binding resolution? Is it going also to have uh, such a positive impact? All these questions and more um, are going to be answered by our expert, as we are very much delighted to have with us live here in the studio, Dr. Ayman Salah, Professor of International Law and member of the Egyptian Council for Foreign Affairs. Thank you very much for being with us, sir, and a very good morning. Good morning. Good morning, Nile TV and your audience. Really delighted to have you, Dr. Ayman, in the studio. And uh, my very first question to you is, after the issuance of uh, the ICC, of the uh, arrest warrants to uh, ben Benjamin Netanyahu and also the uh, Defense Minister, uh, Yoav Gallant, given the history of Israel's continuous ignorance and disrespect of all the, organization, of the, the international organizations, do you think this time there would be any chances of implementation of this uh, arrest warrant? Uh, actually, uh, first of all, let's say that uh, this uh, decision or uh, arrest warrant is a historic one mm -hmm. because this is the first indictment that is issued from an international tribunal uh, against an Israeli official. This is the first. Uh, before, there have been uh, some <coughs> indictments, but there uh, were national indictments like the one that have been issued from uh, Belgium and UK against the CP Livni. But this is the first uh, uh, decision to be issued from an international, uh, an international tribunal against uh, Israeli officials. So this one is very different from uh, any decisions before. Mm -hmm. Yes. But, sir, um, there are things which are taking place on the ground which I really cannot find uh, legal justification for. Um, because uh, there are many countries which said that if Benjamin Netanyahu is on their land, he is going to be arrested. But Hungarian Prime Minister, for example, did something which was very much challenging, saying that he is inviting or invited already Benjamin Netanyahu to his country and said nothing going to happen to him. How do you see this as a breach of the international law or taking into consideration that this is a kind of provocation to the whole Arab and Islamic nations? Uh, let's be clear about something. There mm. is a difference between uh, uh, political uh, approaches and legal approaches. Yeah. For the legal approach, all uh, state parties to uh, ICC, International Criminal Court, which are 124 states, mm. are obliged to uh, arrest uh, Netanyahu and uh, Gallant once they touch the lands of these territories. This is the law. But sometimes we find political, uh, let's say, uh, political talk. This political talk does not represent the legal, uh, uh, the legal commitment of these countries to, uh, uh, to do its obligations. Mm -hmm. And when these uh, uh, officials talk politics, they do not uh, say any uh, uh, legal basis for their uh, decision. So this mm -hmm. is politics. Politics are different. And let me say something very important. Uh, international relations are run by several mechanisms. Uh, political mechanisms, uh, military mechanisms, economic mechanisms, legal mechanisms, diplomatic mechanisms. All these mechanisms are used to run the public uh, relations or international relations. Mm -hmm. Now the law has said its word. The law has said its word. Now it is a third of other actors or international actors to do their role because justice is justice. If you ignore justice as a country, someday your third will become as uh, a victim. And we see uh, Joseph Porel, uh, the top diplomat of the European Union, said that uh, the decision of the ICC is binding and all uh, EU, EU uh, countries are committed to, uh, to, uh, to do and be obligated for, uh, with this uh, resolution. Mm -hmm. uh, this is the top diplomat of the EU. Yeah. So we have to listen more to the top diplomat of the EU more than some uh, uh, officials 
uh, national officials talking uh, politics. Mm -hmm. Yes, but in this point, uh, there are talks about the United States interference in this regard and that it might put pressures and impose pressures on the uh, signing countries on this agreement that uh, they can uh, still uh, compromise and not uh, still implement such uh, a decision. So how do you uh, evaluate this uh, uh, maybe proposal? Okay, now uh, we have 124 state parties to this uh, ICC, this court. Uh, how many countries can the uh, U.S. Uh, put pressure on? And if the U.S. can have absolute pressure on all countries, how come that some countries from the beginning, which is South Africa, uh, uh, Bolivia, uh, Djibouti, uh, Comoros, uh, and, and later Mexico, and some other countries, yes. from the first, uh, at the first hand, managed to refer this case uh -huh. to the court. So if yes. it is about only political pressure, mm -hmm. so we wouldn't have seen some countries uh, last year to refer the case to the court. So political pressure is not everything. And mm -hmm. when we see the, the U.S. situation here, we see kind of uh, a disparity because uh, they reject the, the resolution or the decision against Netanyahu and Gallant. And last year, we see the U.S. have supported uh, the resolution uh, uh, or the uh, arrest warrant against Putin, in spite of the fact that both arrest warrants uh, are issued by the same court. Yes. Mm -hmm. So this is kind of, that's why I'm saying this is, this is politics. Mm -hmm. This mm -hmm. is just a politics uh, uh, talking and, and politics. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, the case did not stop here. Um, uh, on the contrary, uh, the Israeli government refuted the decision and accused even the court of anti-Semitism. And I think that this is the way um, uh, Israel is always playing this game. If uh, um, it is accused of something, it meets the accusation with another accusation. And tell you what, sir, when it comes to, and I like to repeat this every time we speak about war crimes committed by Israel, because uh, Israel was not punished for Sabran, Shatila, Qana, Deir Yassin, Al Khalil, not Hebron, it's Al Khalil massacres. Now it's that easy to, to continue with committing more massacres because they were not uh, punished before. True? Uh, definitely. Uh, if uh, you uh, feel safe. Uh, from the international uh, punishment. So, of course, this will uh, uh, help other actors to preach international law. And Israel now says or accused uh, the court of some accusations. Uh, you can't accuse... Then my question is, sir, I'm sorry for the right. interruption. How can this be different this time? This is different because, as I said, this is the first time uh, a, a court issue an indictment, an international court issue an indictment for Israeli officials. This is the first time. Uh, it hasn't been issued before. So this time is different. And even we can see that Benjamin Netanyahu and Gallant, we see that he is uh, frantic because he can't move freely to 124 countries. And it hasn't happened before to see, believe me, that uh, she cancelled her trip to Belgium and she cancelled her trip to a UK over uh, arrest warrants for alleged war crimes in 2008 in Gaza, which means, which means that this is not something which is easy. This is effective. Why did she cancel her trip? Because, uh, and, uh, and we have to, to bear in mind that that was only national uh, courts, because mm -hmm. national courts have the right to uh, issue arrest warrants or to make investigations uh, concerning uh, crimes against humanity. Mm -hmm. So what about international court uh, as, uh, as big as the ICC? So this yeah. time is very, very different, I think. But still, Dr. Ayman, there are talks about that after the ICC's issuance of the arrest warrants, the, uh, Israel has used even more excessive power mm -hmm. and force on, uh, for example, Lebanon. So do you think this came in response to the ICC's move Actually, Israel has been uh, using excessive force uh, now for more than one year. So the, the, the Israeli military is uh, going uh, on the track of excessive uh, uh, violence. Uh, I can't uh, say that this is in connection or not. Uh, what we are uh, sure of that now Israel is feeling the heat. Mm -hmm. The Israeli government is feeling the heat. Netanyahu and Gallant are feeling the heat. 
they feel they are cornered now and you can see this when he talked about he was trying to defend himself and saying and even when he tried to defend himself he didn't use any legal basis he just said that the court is uh, anti semitic and you can't accuse a court and if the court is, is anti semitic what about other actors in the world you can't accuse a court you can't reply to a court in a political way because uh, Israel challenged uh, the jurisdiction of the court uh, mm -hmm. and the court said no that the court has jurisdiction over the Israel of the Palestinian land so it means that Israel have used or its legal paths try to challenge the resolution mm -hmm. or the decision but it didn't manage because the court said that the court have uh, has jurisdiction over the Palestinian territory because Palestine is a state party to the ICC since 200, uh, 2015 mm -hmm. so it has jurisdiction so uh, any political declarations uh, does not count when it comes to law you know sir analysts uh, and experts are saying all the time that the war or the Israeli genocide war in Gaza um, is continuing because it's the end of Netanyahu by anyways and Netanyahu if he stopped what he is doing right now, he's going to be behind bars and in jail. And um, here the question is, I don't know if this is going to be a little bit far from okay. our, the core of our topic. Do you think that if Netanyahu disappears from the whole scene, the case was go is going to be different and in the, um, if we are going to measure with the very same way, with the presence now of Donald Trump as the American president-elect. Is it going also to be that different from the Biden's administration or um, is, is going, is, it's going to be the same here and there? It's uh, not about characters, I mean, it's about the administrations or the, uh, the policies of each. Uh, for uh, Benjamin Netanyahu, uh, he himself is facing uh, 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 corruption uh, cases uh, in, in domestically. Yeah. Uh, he is uh, uh, waiting for some kind of investigations on crimes concerning uh, corruption domestically. Uh, and as we see, the Israeli government uh, is not uh, now unified as it was before. This means that uh, a lot of people in Israel itself uh, are against the war because this is insane war. This is insane war. He is even embarrassing his allies all over the world. We see this crimes against humanity, the killing of uh, civilians, uh, the starvation, so he is in, uh, causing embarrassment to his allies. Uh, uh, President Donald Trump uh, has made some uh, uh, declarations before getting to office, uh, but we uh, will wait until uh, next January to see how uh, things will go. But uh, what I'm sure of is that the whole world uh, is not uh, satisfied uh, with what's happening. They may want uh, to achieve uh, some kind of uh, uh, similar target for the Israeli uh, state. I'm talking about the Western allies, but not in that way. Mm -hmm. Not in that way. And so a lot of people talked about two-state solution, and we will wait to see uh, what might happen in next January. Yeah. Taking from your words, Dr. Ayman, talking about the two-state solution, and uh, actually Egypt is taking a leading role in the negotiations process, but still Israel is ignoring, of course, as usual, all the efforts exerted in this regard. But not only the government, the Israeli government itself is, uh, um, there, are, there are so many theories discussed inside it, and so many opinions are brought to the table, but also the public opinion in the whole world, it is opposing now the war, and it is opposing Israel still. Israel is continuing to take on this uh, aggr aggressive approach in Gaza and in Lebanon. So how do you evaluate this approach while it is not serving the Israeli narrative and it is not serving the public opinion to support Israel? Uh, definitely. Uh, this, uh, Egypt uh, has a leading, uh, uh, was, uh, uh, had a lead or has a leading path for the two-state solution uh, besides all Arab countries, besides a lot of countries because this is the only, the solution must be political, military solution will not get uh, the, the, the case to an, an end and uh, uh, all people or analysts say that what's happening now and prodding the war to Lebanon is just kind and of, Netanyahu is doing that to prolong the war because he knows that at the moment the, the, the war will end he will face a lot of domestic charges inside Israel. And still so no goals achieved. 
Yes, yes. Uh, no goals achieved. He didn't uh, release the hostages. What are the goals in the first place? No His goals are to, yes, to displace more than once, more than 2.3 million right. Palestinians from their land. What is the goal? Right. He said that he wants to release the hostages. He said that he wants to exterminate uh, any militants. Nobody is speaking now about the hostages, despite the fact that no Hamas, one is speaking, yes. Hamas um, uh, announced just two days ago that one of the female Israeli hostages was killed in one of the, uh, right. of the Israeli attacks. But we have not heard at all of any reaction coming from inside Israel. Right. Isn't it weird? Uh, it is weird, of course. It is weird. And people are, uh, all the even the Israeli people are saying that uh, no uh, objects, objectives of the war has been uh, uh, accomplished, so we need to stop this uh, uh, war. This is insane war, actually. Amen to that. But, sir, um, I'd like to focus a little bit more on uh, um, this issue inside um, Egypt. I mean, uh, Egypt was very much keen to let all the top executives, top international executives to be in El Arish and to be on, um, just in front of the Rafah border crossing to see how Egypt is, um, activ is activating all its authorities to uh, try to help the Palestinians. And Karim Khan himself, the Hague uh, president, was one of those um, uh, top officials. Uh, um, just uh, yesterday or the day before, uh, Borge Brandy, the WEF president, was here and he had talks with President Abdel Fattah Sisi and President Sisi was keen also to mention the whole issue and how it can be an expanded regional war which is going to, be, to have catastrophic impacts on the whole world. Christina uh, Georgieva, Joseph Borrell, um, you can, um, Pedro Sanchez of Spain, I cannot um, count all the names, but many of those, if not all of them, they were there and they witnessed themselves the obstacles put um, by the Israeli occupation um, to, uh, uh, to stop the access of humanitarian aid to the women and children of Palestine. How do you see this and how do you see those top executives as eyewitnesses of what, uh, what is and what was going on through the past 13 months? Uh, this is a very important point because uh, one of the very uh, biggest visits that we uh, had was the visit of uh, Amir Khan, the prosecutor of the ICC. He had been to the uh, yes, Rafah crossing and uh, uh, he uh, saw himself uh, what is happening in uh, uh, the crossing itself and even the, the in the indictment he said that uh, Israel is using starvation as a weapon of war uh, so as to uh, by hindering by hindering the aids to enter into uh, the Palestinian land uh, where will the AIDS enter from? From Egypt. So this means that Egypt has been keen to push as much uh, AIDS uh, as uh, we can to the other uh, side. But Israel hindered these uh, uh, AIDS and that's why it is included even in the, uh, the indictment to uh, Benjamin Netanyahu. And of course the top officials were keen to see by their eyes what's happening on the uh, borders by coming to uh, Rafah. Uh, EU Joseph Borrell yes, and UN Guterres were and among them. those uh, yes. top executives yes. which, who right. were there and witnessed themselves what you have just uh, mentioned, sir. Definitely, yes. Yes, Definitely. but of course no, nobody hopes that the force uh, uh, becomes the leader of the, the scene. So in your opinion, do you think one day we're going to have a different uh, international organization or a different international system that doesn't have such double standards and could finally lead to a sort of solution, a sort of uh, just uh, prioritizing just negotiations and the diplomatic approach one day? Uh, actually, if we look at the uh, government, uh, governing you know, national organiz organization now is the UN. Mm -hmm. uh, the UN uh, uh, has uh, came uh, or come to life after the Second World War. So the Second World War has its, uh, let's say, implications mm -hmm. on the constitution of the UN. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, we are looking for a lot of uh, jurists, a lot of people talked about some kinds of uh, 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 changes in the uh, system of the international, uh, of the United Nations, especially the veto. Because now we have seen that U.S. have used, have vetoed uh, four times the resolution for ceasefire. Mm -hmm. So actually we can't depend only on uh, one 
nation to prevent the uh, uh, issuance of such uh, very critical uh, decisions. So a lot of people are talking now about some kind of changes uh, within the UN itself. And let me say something. Uh, United, uh, the international organizations uh, don't change by themselves. There must be circumstances and situations that uh, push these uh, organizations to make some alterations to their system uh, to the better. And we are uh, always optimistic that the future comes with, uh, will be better than what happened in the past. Of course. Um, sir, when it comes to media and the media coverage of uh, the Israeli genocide war, in Gaza, you know, now media experts are saying, do not all the time speak about the death toll. Because uh, the audience or the people, they are going to get used of the thousands who are already martyred. And every day there are such large numbers. And it's now in going en passant as the French are saying. Others would say, no, remind the whole world every single day with the numbers. As a professor of international law and as uh, someone who is really that much in contact with the impact of such issues on changing the rules, as you've kindly mentioned, or changing even the charters of big international organizations, how the media should deal with such an issue. And also, um, the demonstrations which were filling the whole world and the capitals of the West um, calling for a stop of the bloodshed for an immediate ceasefire. Unfortunately, they stopped right now, or at least they decreased because it's in vain. Should we continue with such issues? The demonstration and the protests can play a role in changing international laws. Do we have anything like that in the history of mankind? Uh, let me say, uh, say something. The uh, media coverage for uh, what's uh, the ordeal of uh, people in Gaza is never in vain. This is the real force. This is the real force that forces the international uh, community and international uh, societies to uh, put pressure on their governments to respond. So the media coverage is very important because we had had wars before, but the media coverage wasn't that advanced. Now every person inside Gaza is a journalist. Mm -hmm. He can picture and he can photo and he can send these images. That's why we see this time it is different. So I, we need the media all the time to cover what's happening in, in Palestine. And this resulted in, as I see, it is not easy as, uh, in order to say for international uh, criminal court this time to uh, uh, produce an indictment against uh, two Israeli officials because it has tried before and there has been uh, some pressure that has been put on this uh, court before, but this time it managed to do so. Why it managed to do so? Because of the public opinion. Public opinion is very, very, very strong. People can't uh, stand blind uh, in front of before what's happening. So it's okay. very, very important. Media's coverage is very, very, and this is one of the uh, strengthful uh, weapons uh, in uh, uh, facing this uh, uh, killing machine uh, in Gaza. Mm -hmm. And uh, taking from uh, this question, I mean, thank you so much for raising this uh, point because when we say media coverage, we're also talking about the public documentation. Mm -hmm. The youth and the people, the participants on the different social media platforms that were uh, uh, cons constantly documenting videos and every time these platforms delete these videos because of the algorithm that was, all, uh, that was always um, updated and adjusted mm -hmm. to not accept such content and still people uh, reposted every piece of video and every post again. How do you comment on this fight uh, from the uh, side of the people, of the civilians all over the world um, in this very hard uh, conflict? Uh, I need to say something very important. Yes. The ICC used uh, yes. these uh, videos yes. as, uh, part, evidence. as evidence, mm -hmm. the, the videos that are uh, cast or broadcast from uh, all over the world from the people inside Gaza, it is used as an evidence mm -hmm. in, the inter in the ICC besides other things. So it is very, very effective. What can you say about uh, the videos? If you can say that some of the videos are uh, just made up, what about millions of videos? Can, how can they uh, be made up? So this is kind of evidence. When the uh, the, the courts say that, or when Khan, the prosecutor Khan says that he has uh, reasonable grounds, reasonable grounds to believe that there is criminal responsibility against Netanyahu because of uh, uh, crimes against humanities, because of uh, war crimes. This is based on evidence, uh, videos, documentation, all these things, even the reports of top 
uh, organization uh, officials, mm -hmm. all these count and add together for uh, the, the, the indictment that was uh, produced by the ICC. We can never ignore anything. This mm -hmm. is very important. But nothing is more uh, 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 strong. Nothing is stronger than real uh, videotaping of real. Mm -hmm. Uh, ordeal of people dying, people starving, millions of videos. What can what can Netanyahu say about this? He can say nothing. He can say nothing, but he um, he is that bold to continue what he is doing under the title of self-defense. I don't know okay. how self-defense can be uh, put in the very same sentence with children, minors, with uh, patients in the intensive care units, with fuel, which is. Um, um, uh, very uh, scarce um, good uh, right now when it comes to the fuel which is running unfortunately all the equipment in the two or three hospitals hardly and partially operating in Gaza sir there are some optimistic voices which are saying that by any means this violence is going to stop sometime the bloodshed is going to stop sometime but the whole world now knew the real image of Israel and the real image of the double standards practiced by the international community and particularly by the top Israeli ally, the United States of America. And this is something which will not be forgotten that easy. Can I consider this, of course uh, there is nothing positive in wars, but can I really consider this as something which we should build upon as Arab diplomacy? Now you know yourself, we, we are not in need anymore to explain what is the real image of Israel? Uh, definitely, definitely. And uh, if we look at, uh, if we count how many countries uh, support uh, uh, the ICC uh, resolution, uh, there are uh, many countries, if you look at Spain, uh, Italy, uh, a lot of countries, of European countries are supporting uh, the, 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 the resolution. And on the other hand, how many countries uh, rejected the resolution? We can mm. find me, me Germany. UK did not comment on the arrest of Netanyahu. Mm. So if, by numbers, you can count the numbers of countries and states that support this decision and that support the two-state resolution. And countries you haven't before been aware that these countries are really concerned with, uh, with such a uh, such case like mm. South Africa was kind of uh, uh, Djibouti uh, 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 Bangladesh so now things are changing we haven't seen that before because what's happening in Gaza actually is insane mm -hmm. even Israel uh, uh, allies feel in Paris this is insane uh, if you are going to uh, uh, make a war, so war has rules. War has rules. It doesn't mean that to kill civilians. So th th things will change. It affected uh, 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 to affect the diplomacy. It's already affecting the Israeli government. Is already feeling the heat. They feel that they are, they are cornered. And I'm optimistic about uh, the future of this uh, of the uh, uh, Palestinian cause. I'm really optimistic. Always having optimism and faith in God, of course, is the way out of anything, of any challenge that we are facing. Thank you so much, Dr. Ayman Falah Murader, Professor of International Law and member of the Egyptian Council for Foreign Affairs. Thank you so much for being You're here welcome. with us. You're welcome. I Thank think me and Ermin, we can go on for hours because we really enjoyed this yeah. interview. Thank you so much. And dear viewers, we're going to have a short break and get back to the breakfast show.